and we got a call from Nitin Kamath asking if we wanted to talk to us. Initially, he wrote a check for around two CR, which eventually became four CR. Within first meeting only. With the first meeting, he said, "Look, I I don't know about your business model." We said, "We also don't know." He never thought of making a return out of this, and he had thought like a trader also. He had said, "Look, I'm going to write a check for four CR, but we will have a stop loss. We will say that after spending X amount, if things still don't work." Then we will say that this is a bad trade. It's over. We'll figure out something else. Huh. And we had said fair enough, right? This is okay. And so in the first meeting, without asking for business model, nothing, he made a bet on us. In fact, if I were in his position, I would have sent me out of the company there only. Huh. I would have said that the bogus idea. This is huh. these guys are frauds. These huh. guys are trying to nick my money, etc. But he had the foresight to imagine what we couldn't imagine itself. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the One Person Club Show, where we talk to some of the most successful people in India. On today's episode, we have Mr. Shahid Karkera, who is the founder of two of the most loved and most respected financial companies in the country, namely FinShorts and Ditto. Shahid, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me, Shahid. Before I am A, what yeah. were you doing? I was actually teaching at a coaching center, so I had graduated oh. as a computer science engineer. Oh, after yeah. graduating as a computer science, you became a teacher. Yeah, I became a teacher. Teaching right? what? I was teaching uh, time students, uh, CAT students. Initially, I started teaching bank PO aspirants, but I think slowly I realized I had a knack for teaching. I graduated from teaching bank PO students aspirants to slowly CAT students, and I was like, okay, maybe I could give this exam myself. So you were teaching, then you gave CAT, yeah, got into that. IMA. But I wanted to ask you, you did that, you got into IMA, you studied for two years. Yeah, yeah. Why why did you not go and just do the safe route of joining a big you know multinational corporate yeah, yeah. and get that 25 lakh 30 lakh per annum package at a big management consulting firm yeah, yeah. and lead a chill life instead you decided to go the entrepreneurial route yeah. where there is no certainty yeah. right so what was the thought process Sharan the answer is very simple right I thought my life was set only uh-huh. for me to actually go into the institution and found that everybody around me was smarter than I was. and everybody and I, and i i remember preparing for an accounting exam i i really tried the first exam i remember i i worked i worked really really hard i read everything that i could i tried to do everything that i possibly could huh. to score well and i got a c minus okay the moment i got a c minus i was like no matter what i do here right i'm not going to be able to compete with these people it's a cop out only in the sense that i fo- i found out that i'm a fraud okay i'm i'm a fraud in the sense that i made it into i'm the worth but that doesn't mean i'm going to succeed here as well so honestly i feel like at that point in time i was so underconfident i felt like i couldn't do anything meaningful here my first year was a train wreck my gpa was so bad in the first year that i feel like out of the 300 odd people in my batch i was probably ranked close to the last 300 right okay it was that bad and so i thought ki okay fine at least marketing i'll do something so internship mein it's the placement process right huh. so competitive everybody has 10 15 offers or i am sitting one gd after another group discussion after another one interview after another reject 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 and i'm just trying i remember thinking ki i think i'll be the only one who won't get placed right so during during the internship this is the internship process right and and i realized that experience had soured me so much that i was like i don't want to go through this process again mm-hmm. so by the second year i had already realized that i'm not going through this process again no matter what and i got an internship internship mera i got my internship in discovery you know marketing role right discovery the discovery the, the discovery the tv channel and in the tv channel during the course of they were launching a new channel at the time called discovery jeep and i was interning there but in the first two months i had proved absolutely nothing for my manager to confide any trust in me in fact if i were my manager i would have fired me it was it was a train wreck right and at the end of the, the you know the internship i had the audacity to go to my manager and ask can can i get a ppo <laughs> right he obviously chased me off huh. he didn't say anything so by the end of that i realized this is not where i belong i may have gotten but now to yaar i don't know what i'm going to do there everybody is smarter than you everybody did an internship me. at discovery uh, train wreck uh, but towards the end of it i decided that yaar placement i i can't do this right i i probably need to do something else this was immediately after we graduated and we started off with the most horrible idea you could think of we started covering sme ipos that is where we started we used to cover you know the market in the hopes that this will be useful where it was not then we started pivoting we started writing about more mainstream companies nestle and your page industries etc and that also probably succeeded to a certain extent but really i mean if you're writing one story a week 
it's not going to make a meaningful impact on on people's life you had obviously a loan as well i'm assuming yeah, right yeah. 25 lakh 30 yeah, yeah, lakh rupee yeah. loan 20 odd lakh ka it was loan. Yeah, loan so what were you doing who's paying the emi the college they said every year for two years right every month if you continue working on your startup i will give you a monthly stipend of 40000 rupees oh they do all this they offer this and they say ki i'm incentivizing you now to start up because obviously loan hai you can't you know you have to pay your emi otherwise you can't do anything and they also said after 2 years if nothing works out you will have a safety net you can come back and sit through the placement process again oh now now granted that i was never looking to do that uh-huh. but still that that is a massive safety net so for those first one one and a half year when we were experimenting and doing completely ridiculous things like writing sme stories etc the only reason why we could do that was because of the stipend and the fellowship wait 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 you are getting 40000 rupees stipend Correct. and then how are you hiring people so so we had interns we would all pool 10000 from each one of us uh-huh. so we would pay that we would the 10 you know remaining 10000 we would keep set it aside uh-huh. in the hopes that you know we can fend for ourselves with that money we never said it out aloud but internally each one of us was thinking ki i i don't know how long this will sustain you guys are losing the confidence i think internally you know we were sort of having doubts like when will this end right so i think we were at that point and then suddenly our luck turned again right so we made a silly video of this jet airways ka market share uh-huh. it was this bar graph ka video it was a silly video right and that went viral on twitter and we got a call from nitin kamath asking if we wanted to talk to us right and they said come fly down to bangalore and we didn't have money to fly out down to bangalore also uh-huh. went to our college again we begged them right uh-huh. we were like please give us some money so that we can buy flight tickets because he, you know we we need to meet him in the next one week graciously enough again we got the money we booked the tickets we went there we were supposed to meet nitin unfortunately when we were supposed to meet nitin you get a call from his executive assistant say sorry nitin got invited to prime minister modi swearing in ceremony today huh. unfortunately we'll have to reschedule i'm like we can't reschedule we are flying out tomorrow this this absolutely no scope she is like oh what can we do now and nitin again you know being the gracious guy that he is right so he came early in the morning 7 o'clock the next day so that we don't miss our flight so that he can talk to us right okay and so that chance meeting with nitin gave us a lifeline so my mine was a similar story yeah um i was uh, you know doing my one person club i was in mumbai uh-huh. uh, things were going good and then i thought okay let me also try out this vc game like, uh-huh. let's see what they're doing yeah. why you know why are entrepreneurs raising money yeah the only person i knew was nikhil kamath right i texted him saying hey i wanted to talk about what we got them doing yeah, yeah. he's like he also said come mm. next day only he said come yeah, yeah. from mumbai i i fly to bangalore yeah, yeah. first meeting itself i tell him what we're doing he also uh, makes an offer immediately yeah, yeah. i had no idea how to value my company yeah, i yeah. i've not studied valuation yeah, no yeah. <laughs> fundamental analysis nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. he only says you know i think i'll uh, give you 10 crores for 100 crore uh, uh, valuation that's that's good i am not i didn't say immediately uh, i want to sound a little cool no? uh, let me take some time to think about right, it right, right. <laughs> i went to his balcony for yeah. 10 minutes came back <laughs> shook his hand and then went no it's it's the same thing right i mean beggars can't be choosers so when yeah. he made that offer we were like any valuation we'll take it right yeah. we just we just wanted to survive mm. he had he had shown us that ki maybe more is possible with the content and once once sort of we got his confidence right i think we also were like okay we can probably do something right with yeah. zero self and we launched finshot can you talk a little bit about what finshot so finshot started off as a 3 minute daily newsletter that helps break down one financial story a so day so what you guys did at finshot and the reason why i think it scaled to half a million subscribers in such a short span of time is that you were able to cater to not just people who were interested in finance or had a ca degree or had a cfa degree but also a layman who was a mechanical engineer like i was a mechanical engineer and i discovered you and i fell in love with your content yeah. and finshots worked really well right we, yeah. it worked really well etc and and then the question was how how do we make money because i think once you raise money you become custodian of somebody else's faith right yeah. so then it becomes more important for you to figure out how to make money at the time we had about 6 8 months ka runway right 8 months ka runway right which was probably around 1 1.2 cr something like that okay. because we were spending around 10 lakhs in salaries so you guys were taking salaries uh, we were taking salaries yeah we were taking some 60000 ka 40000 ka f- okay. uh, to compensate our stipend money we were taking 40 50000 ka salary. you continuing with that salary only yeah yeah i think i think we had increased it slightly right we were taking i think 60000 if i'm not wrong so 2020 yeah. you are taking 60000 rupees per month salary Correct. company has 8 months of money left yeah 8 8 9 months something like and that. you are about to make your last gamble we were like okay this is a final gamble and we decide we were going to do insurance right and as part of the final gamble we also went to nitin asking if he'll fund us right 
he said ah, i don't know we'll see we'll see huh. uh, this thing because obviously no experience in insurance etc but zero the wanted to do insurance right he had said okay you put together a plan we will see what happens first get the license at least right so we okay. took eight months we got our license i think in october november or something like that because we had applied for it in march so you almost ran out of money also yeah yeah so so by now we are running out of money uh, and we also realized that we don't have money to hire sales people Okay. Right, because you you know if you sell insurance, so all four founders start taking calls. So we tell on our newsletter if you need insurance advice, you can book a call. So who is he booking a call with us? Founders only. Right? only. Founders only. And we started doing calls for one month. We started doing calls, right? And once we had shown proof of concept that we can actually sell insurance, we had gotten endorsements, etc. We went to Nitin. We pitched him the idea again, and we are like, listen, I think we can do insurance. and nitin again he took a bet even though we had no experience in insurance he was like okay now i'll commit another check he wrote a 5 million dollar ka check he said if this is what you need to build the insurance business that is what i'll do so it's a 40 crore it's, yeah it's right? a 40 odd crore ka check and then you know then we were like finally right uh-huh. we had, we have finally have some leg room kar but luckily for us we managed to sort of find product market fit very early hmm. so that we didn't have to rely on the funding only so we didn't need a lot of money in fact that Forty crores is still untouched in the bank, right? Mm. Because we started making cash flows through. Insurance. Oh, you guys have not touched that money. No, we touched it, but now it's it's breached that, right? We had to initially use it for a few months, but eventually, yeah. Now, now it's sort of balloon. We, we probably didn't need forty cr. That much I ha, can tell you, ha. right? We probably needed some four five cr, right, to actually build the business. Ditto. Right. What is Ditto today? How big is it? Yeah. And what kind of show are you running? Tell me that. So, so Ditto right now is a three hundred plus member organization. Um, so we started off. advising people on insurance now we obviously are an insurance distributor which means we sell health and term insurance policies to people who are looking to pick a good protection product right currently when it comes to online insurance space i think we are the second biggest player in the industry um, online only insurance distribution um, in fact i was told that we sell more health and term policies than some of the biggest financial players in the country right interesting so now that you are you know the second largest insurance online uh, online online insurance, online insurance seller in the country yeah. right second largest yeah. so now i want to kind of understand the ground reality of what happens in this insurance space yeah. right what goes into picking the right health insurance product because now you guys are the ones who are advising like how many people have you advised so far um so far i think we've had close to Two and a half, three lakhs people, I guess. Two and a half, three lakhs. It's lakh almost three lakh people. Yeah, three lakh people have booked a call with us, and we've spoken to them all. They've texted us on WhatsApp, and we yeah. advise them. Over. So almost two and a half, three lakh people, you guys are advising on insurance yeah, product. Yeah, so yeah. what goes behind, uh, you know, filtering out of that and telling, hey, this is good for a customer. Like, what is the process? Insurance is a product where you have absolutely no idea if the product is actually going to be meaningful until you make a claim. but before we get into that let's distinguish let's explain the audience what are the two different types of claims okay. one is that insurance company says that um i will pay on your behalf Correct. so you don't have to ever open your wallet that's cashless claim. cashless yes, yes. second is a reimbursement claim yes. where you pay first Correct. and then you apply and within 30 days you get your money Take back it. obviously the first one is more preferred yes. because i will not have 7 lakh sitting in my bank you account know, at any given point very few people and and yeah. also the features some people will tell i'll give you unlimited restoration 1 crore ka cover huh. you can go international treatment etc huh. you can fly anywhere take presidential suite in a hospital no room rent restriction huh. now you tell me i go to a presidential suite in apollo in say kochi and i spend 30 35 lakhs how will my cashless claim get approved when the insurance company the moment it crosses 4 or 5 lakhs they'll trigger an investigation they will say we cannot process this cashless claim because we are slightly doubtful about the veracity of the claim they can do that simply they'll do they can do that huh. they they don't have to support any you know they don't have to offer any supporting documents etc one of my friends i remember his father had ported to this policy right so this chap goes to the doctor and he says i have a problem in my throat no wait wait he ported he ported then he realized he had then after that doc- four months later he went to a doctor because this throat problem didn't go away so there they identified that after a biopsy that uh, this chap had cancer this this individual had cancer right throat cancer in the initial diagnosis report the doctor had mentioned that this patient has been complaining 8 months of a throat problem the moment this happened the insurance company denies the cashless claim stating that this information was not disclosed with us you did not disclose this information with us we have grounds we will fight this case now obviously we went and petitioned the insurance company saying that the doctor has provided another report stating that there has been no doctor consultation there has been no diagnosis this is not an issue only so how can he tell anything to you right 
So we got another report from the doctor saying that that was his mistake of mentioning it. But the insurance company now is like, no, no, I will fight. Right. So then we had to fight with the insurance company to process the claim. So when it is insured, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually they did because they know they have no grounds. They have no grounds, right? They also know. But right? they just want to do this. They just want to do this because they're like, Dekh ta, we'll see. We, we, what is there? They lose nothing. Insurer, the regulator doesn't penalize them, right? Yeah. So they'll they'll see, they'll say we have some in fact, recently we had another this thing saying ki, uh, this chap had diabetes. He got a heart attack. Huh. Right. Now this, this is another, another person. Another, another example. He had diabetes, he had disclosed the diabetes problem. Policy was issued, he gets a heart attack. In the waiting period, three years ka waiting period like that for diabetes related complications. Now the insurer says, they deny the claim and they say, we have done a study internally huh. that shows that such cases of diabetes are linked to heart problems. And so we believe that this diabetes is linked to the heart condition and we will not process the claim because now it's under the waiting period. That is their own research. Your own research. Huh. And we, like, we provide the research. You give us the research, right? Huh. And they're like, no, 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 it is internal research, we've done something. Uh -huh. And then we go to the uh, provider again and we're like, if you do not escalate this again, same threat, right? I will cut business, I will go to the ombudsman, I will fight. I will fight, you know, tooth and nail, if you don't, if you do not give this. And eventually, yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll sort of, you know, it, it, again, negotiation, leverage, etc. right? They'll be like, okay, fine, I'll, 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 I'll give you the claim. Kar. Even life insurance companies, yeah. right? Yeah. You have to be very careful about the companies that you partner with. I can tell you a case, right, where there was a term claim, unfortunately... But uh, the term insurance basically means if a person dies, yes. then my family should get that money. Correct. Meaning if I've gotten a 1 crore term insurance, yes. uh, I have to pay like 10,000 rupees premium every year. Yeah, yeah. And if I die, my yeah. family gets 1 crore. 1 crore. And that 10, is term 000, Yeah, 10,000 premium remains the same throughout your life. Correct. And 1 crore tax free. Yeah. Right. You get tax free, your family will get the full corpus of once year, large amount. Huh. And because there is such large amounts involved, insurance companies are also very smart. They do investigations. I mean, unlike a mutual fund where you invest and then you probably don't have to fiddle with it. Insurance is a product, if you don't have help, right, sometimes it can get very, very messy. Right. It's all about fighting. In fact, most of our team, right, if you see where my time goes also or where, you know, my founder's time goes, also, it's just fighting with the insurance companies. Mm. So now you tell me, why will I recommend a new insurance company that has no track record where I know I'm not going to be able to guarantee claims even yeah. if they have great features. Features doesn't matter at all because I told you 30 lakh a claim, cashless claim, if it doesn't get approved, what is the point of no restoration? Yeah. What is the point of me going international treatment? Oh. Right? I have to pay first once year. It doesn't so matter. So what happens, you just tell me this. Let's say that uh, there is a person who falls ill, goes to the doctor, yeah. doctor tells her to do this operation, operation yeah. is going to cost 20 lakhs. Correct. He goes to his insurance company. Okay. Insurance company says, I can't give you cashless because of so and so reasons. Yes. You have to pay first. Yes. You only do it. Yes. Now, where will this person get 20 Nothing. lakhs There's from? There's no choice. I mean, then you are, you're stuck unless somebody actually goes and fights for you. No, let's say that, I mean, it's very serious. Yes. I need to pay the hospital. Yeah. What are his options? Like, what will the... Social media, that's it. And then you have to shame the company on social media. That, honestly, that is the only option. There's no other option. But in don't fact, some people take like personal loans and all for they, they do it. They do it. Ultimately, if nobody is paying, I have to get desperate. No. However, having said this, the good insurers that we have worked with, out of the 10 claim that comes in, right? Maybe one or two they'll dispute because there is some real grounds to dispute. Like, this is a, I, I, there's a legitimate case. I, I'll give you an example where we had a customer come in and uh, this lady was getting a hip replacement surgery. Now, the doctor report in his report has noted that this lady had taken a consultation for the same hip related problem and she had a minor surgery done three years ago before she bought the policy and she had not disclosed this with the insurer. Now, this is reasonable grounds. Now, the guy chap, provides another report from the same doctor saying that, no, no, it was a mistake from the doctor. It's a mistake, it rarely ever happens, right? Maybe here, you know, there are the, you know, small mistakes can happen, but such mistakes don't happen. So now you know that the insurance company is also in the right because they did not disclose something, right? In fact, this one case may, what had happened was, unfortunately, the gentleman passed away by way of suicide, right? So after one year of buying the term policy, you can, you can get a claim, right? Uh, there's no bar for suicide. Now, the spouse had told family members that the gentleman had passed away because of a heart attack. Because obviously it's it's stigmatized, you know, they, she didn't want everybody to know, etc. Now the insurance company in the course of its investigation goes to every family member and starts telling them that this person passed away by suicide, how come you don't know, did he have depression? Because now if they find any grounds to say that this person had mental health problems and they had consulted a doctor before and they not disclosed it in the policy document, they can reject the claim. 
and again you know we had to get involved saying ki you stop immediately everything you know we stop the insurance company from actually going down that route etc and massive you know it was a massive mess right so and you guys are like superman man you guys come and save people so we do that because that's our obligation to our customer otherwise there's no point in us taking commission what what yeah. do we get what is what are we doing just just telling you this policy you buy no no our value addition happens after you buy the policy so now let's talk about um, a trending lifestyle uh, change amongst the youngsters yeah. you know a lot of youngsters are now starting to vape they're smoking cigarettes yeah, yeah. and there's a very uh, big disparity in the definition of what a smoker is yeah, yeah, some yeah, people yeah. are like i'm a social smoker <laughs> i'll smoke you know once a, once every few months yeah, yeah. right but when it comes to getting an insurance yeah. policy yeah. what is the right thing to do like how do how do i know whether i should disclose myself as a smoker or not so i think the questions now have have become fairly straight forward so the questions will be something like have you smoked in the last 12 months but the cost will change you know if you say you're a smoker almost you know 50 60% increase also we've seen sometimes so if i'm paying 10000 rupees for a 1 crore term insurance yes yes it could be 15 16000 yes, rupees yes, if yes. i'm a smoker yes 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 it depends on the profile right sometimes it's 30% sometimes it's even higher depending on the insurer etc it's so significantly 30 40% to man ke chalo you know you'll get at least that much increase yeah. and obviously people don't want to pay that premium you know hike right so they'll be like no 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 i i won't declare it now you don't have to declare it and maybe the tests won't show up but the point is when 2 3 crores is involved right especially when they have to make a claim the investigation will be very thorough they will ask every nominee every friend every person that they can find to see huh. if you smoke if huh. they find even the remotest evidence in social media post huh. in fact i've heard stories i don't know if it's true but i've heard companies going to social media profiles and finding people who have drunk or smoked and they've seen pictures and they've used that to contest claims wow <laughs> right so because 3 crores i can spend 10 10 lakh on an investigator and i can huh. save money you know so so i've i've seen insurance companies do it i think i thought there is a misconception out there because most people think that if i disclose that i'm a smoker and a drinker yeah. uh, and if something happens because of that i'm covered no 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 that, but that's... there is something called substance abuse yes. which means that the insurer is now telling that you knew this yes. you are purposely you yes. know uh, you know hurting your body with yes. smoking and drinking yes. due to which this has happened yes. and now that's not my responsibility whether you disclose it or not correct correct that's that's exactly it, right so that I mean, is the hard truth that is the hard truth and and in fact i i, I know routinely see people um, who've declared that they're smokers and they smoke x packs a day and then eventually they get diagnosed with say something like lung cancer and there is a clear correlation there right because you've declared so many packs i can clearly establish some ground to say that this lung cancer is related to your smoking habit and i can if i can make that link i can contest a claim if i can contest a claim i can deny a claim so then what is the point of disclosing only if they're not going to cover it later no no but that that's the thing right if you are a modest drinker a smoker etc and if you have other issues right other issues etc then they won't come back and say ki oh you did not disclose this right like what other issues like like let's suppose you have a heart attack let's suppose there's a heart issue etc and they found out that at some point in time that you used to drink in the past and you've made you you've not made these declarations so once you're unfaithful in your declarations and the insurance company or sorry the hospital or the treating doctor in their discharge summary make any observations about your alcohol habits or your smoking habits etc insurance companies then have ground to say that you were not honest in your declarations even if it is not related to oh. you know the condition that you're suffering right now and they can contest a claim hmm. right it's not a matter of whether you can win in high court you know supreme court 10 years later it's a matter of whether your nominees can even fight the case for that long right so generally we tell people to declare it because this shouldn't be an issue they shouldn't have any grounds to deny the claim saying that look the doctor has made a mention that you smoke occasionally whereas you've not declared this in the insurance you know in the proposals or the application so so that's why we ask people to declare it because it's in their best interest now what about this let's say i took a term insurance i've never smoked in my life yeah. i took term insurance it's been 3 years yeah then i meet this guy in goa and we are smoking now. yeah yeah now what happens yeah so so that's an interesting question because often times nothing should happen because you started smoking after you bought the policy and ideally there should be no repercussions however what we tell people is if you pick up a smoking habit or if you pick up a drinking habit you've not disclosed it in the proposal form afterwards obviously because you can't disclose you haven't been drinking and smoking what we tell people is generally to keep the insurance company informed because nothing happens to your policy after that once it's issued they can't change the premiums they can't come and say you know we'll do this we'll do that etc so as a good faith measure we inform the insurance company that so and so you know lifestyle habits have changed and the insurance is privy to this detail so that eventually if the claim comes through 
and my nominees have to deal with this. The insurance company doesn't go digging around and they find one strand saying that oh, this person has smoked. Now they have to investigate whether you've been smoking before. All of this may not crop up because you made a declaration. I started smoking three years later. Because you were honest. Yes, you were honest. So keep the insurance company informed about whatever yeah, habits yeah. you pick up. Like some something something like this, you know, it's always good. Like when people come to us and say, should I, you know, disclose it to the insurance company? We say there's there's nothing, there's no harm, right? You can disclose it and nothing will happen, nothing will change. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So usually we tell people. Uh, guys, we just wanted to mention that for all the one person club members, you guys will now have access to Ditto's best insurance advisors and you guys will get it access on the same day as well and the link is down below in the comment section um, for booking your slots for getting the right health insurance or the right life insurance product not just for you but also for your parents and other family members yeah, yeah. all right guys i'll see you in the next one